is uh, Luca. Luca? Luca, hello. No, Barbato. Oh, Barbato, sorry. And he will be talking about uh, Rust AD. So please give him a lot of <clears throat> okay, uh, welcome. Uh, well, let's start with me, who I am. Uh, I contribute to uh, quite a bit of different open source projects uh, Gentoo, VDLAN, LibreV, Rust directly, VPX, X264. So, uh, my experience is mostly on everything that goes from fixing random software that ends up broken because of Gen 2. Since we build everything from source, if the source break with that compiler, we have to fix it. I have a, quite an experience with multimedia, both on fixing bugs, uh, getting stuff built, uh, designing APIs. Uh, I started to get my hand dirty directly with the Rust compiler. And today I'm going to talk to you about uh, multimedia in Rust, as in writing a multimedia framework in pure Rust. Why to do that? Uh, I guess you all know already that uh, Rust is uh, touted as a quite safe language that is still for system programming and uh, is supposed to be quite fast and quite good for writing threaded code, multimedia is full of it, and I say give you some guarantees that what you're writing is not going to explode just because you happen to feed it to the wrong pointer. Uh, what's the idea? Why not uh, going the other way, so replacing just some piece of uh, an existing framework with Rust. Well, Rust is also good uh, to writing better APIs because the way Rust works uh, makes you easier to describe concept. So why not start writing a good API, write possibly good code and leverage the whole language and actually try that what is currently touted about Rust is actually real and working for multimedia. So the main idea is that I want to make uh, a framework that is easy to use, possibly fast and trustworthy. So possibly less bugs, less CVEs, less uh, bad situation because you, you play your movie and something bad happens. Uh, easy to use. Uh, do we have other frameworks that are easy to use? We have a problem with multimedia. Multimedia is uh, lots of uh, easy to grasp concept with many, many, many different quirks and details that you have to work around. So usually the framework, if it's easy, is quite opinionated. Makes decision for you and you cannot undo them easily. On the other hand, if the framework lets you do everything that you could want, then you have to face the complexity. And the idea is since Rust gives us the, this concept of uh, zero cost abstraction, I can layer my abstraction so I can match your need regarding simplicity and, well, power to do whatever you want. Uh, fast. Sebastian already said that uh, you can write idiomatic Rust that result in code that executes fast enough, or actually, in my experience, even faster than you would uh, expect. Uh, trustworthy, I guess everybody here already here and experienced the fact that the compiler prevents you to make lots of and lots of mistakes that are quite common if you're writing C or even Java. It would be good, but uh, it is an experiment so far. As in, uh, I can tell you that so far Rust is great, but it's not perfect. And during this presentation, I will show you 
or actually I will tell you what I would like to have in, during this year that is currently not available. Uh, also, since I don't like to reinvent completely the wheel, I'm leveraging other libraries that is part of the Rust ecosystem. And in, the, in the case, multimedia needs can be different from the needs of other software. So even regarding libraries, we have some interaction. Some patches getting written. Sometimes I have to adapt to what the, libra the library wants to do. Uh, currently, in this version, we are using a bit of NOM that I guess you know quite well. Who doesn't know NOM? OK, enough people. Uh, probably you don't know that there, there is the cookie, cu uh, cookie cutter that is uh, from the same uh, person that uh, wrote GNOME and does exactly the opposite. Instead of chewing bytes and give you structure, choose structure and uh, gives you bytes. So what I did so far, uh, the idea for the toolkit of framework is that uh, I'd like to have it uh, modular. So I want that all the code that is written for Rust AV can be reused as much as possible. Uh, as I said already, I'm trying to use a layered approach. So if you don't care about details, you can write your player in a few lines of code. If you do care about details, you can dig down as deep as possible with, within reason. Uh, how am I doing that? Uh, modular, Rust uh, as the concept of crate that uh, works quite well to do that. Every single component, every single codec, every single format lives in a standalone crate. Then if you want to not care about details, we have crates that just re-export a collection of, of uh, different formats, collection of different codec, uh, if you want capabilities, uh, instead of directly using the, uh, the codec, you can use a context that sort of uh, embeds the codec and gives you some layer of abstraction to simplify your life. For the format, you, would, you can fit the format just with bytes, but usually you want to use I.O. You have a context that take an I.O. object take your, the format that uh, is supposed to be able to uh, parse it, and then from there you could just get packets out of it. Uh, with reusable, I say, I want to make so that uh, people like uh, who is implementing GStreamer do not have to undo my, choose, my choices about uh, what, what should be done so they can just wire in directly in the specific codec on format. And that should be helpful. Uh, what we have so far, the idea is that we have some essential crates that give us the uh, basic uh, data types that are used for multimedia. So I want to represent a raw frame. A raw frame can contain video pixel or audio samples. And if we are talking about uh, encoded data, we have packets. And that's the basics. That's the only part that uh, currently everything else in Rust AV depends on. When you are writing codecs, you usually want to read bit by bit, having to deal with codebook, variable length codes, and so on. Uh, we have another sort of base, mostly used just for the codex, that is a bit stream reader and writer. Then we got the core functionality. So far, Rust AV provides you a mean to the MOOCs, MOOCs, uh, decode and encode. I say, if you don't care about details, we have an upper layer. We have the, a player, crate, that just give you the base uh, component just to have the playback. I give it an read object. I get back 
my uh, frames that I can just uh, fit to SDL and I have my player. Encoder, same idea. I got frames and I'm getting uh, encoded data. Meta creates the concept of just making an ensemble so you don't have to uh, think, okay, I want to have the Og Matroska Vorbis. You have just a jumble. Uh, you don't care, you have everything. Uh, we also have some test programs. An transcoding tool and a player tool that uh, is pretty much used to validate everything that is up there. Where are we so far? Uh, so far, what is done for the possibly first release is the API just to do that. So let's say encoding, decoding, maxing, the maxing. We have already some codecs. We have non-native codes, that, codecs that are just wrapping known libraries from C to Rust is quite easy. Uh, I'm working on uh, native codecs, so completely pure Rust. So I'm experiencing phase fear first. How is it uh, going that kind of level of detail using just Rust? As a format, we have Matroska, and the programs available are just those two. In the future, we will have more API surface, so you can do more stuff with uh, this toolkit. We will have more native code. We probably uh, expose more uh, reference codecs, and we will have more formats. For the next, next version, we will still even discussing about hardware acceleration. So this is more or less the roadmap, and uh, is mostly related on my time and how mature Rust is for this purpose. What do I mean? Uh, Rust currently, in my experience, is a great language to write this kind of uh, software because the compiler really helps you. Uh, you don't have that many problems in uh, getting performance even if you're writing high-level idiomatic code. Uh, it's quite easy to uh, write bindings to C, so you don't have even problem in getting something that you can compare. What is missing and what we would like to have? SIMD. SIMD is uh, pretty much uh, a need when you're writing multimedia because you need code that is really fast. It's coming soon. It's coming quite soon, and we have already two inter interesting ways in Nightly to use it. We have Faster, that is a crate that lets you use high-level iterators, and it generates SIMD out of it. Quite good, because you write it once, and uh, you sort of have for free something that is faster. Uh, STD SIMD is part, will be part of STD, and... Uh, will get you all the power of the intrinsics that you currently have, like uh, from CLang and uh, GCC. Uh, another need is allocation that is aligned to something large. Why? SIMD works much better, or works at all, with aligned buffers, and hardware acceleration just need the buffer aligned to their specific needs that could be as large as a page. Uh, something else that would be nice to have, it's not that compulsory, but it's really nice to have, and it's coming soon, const generics. Currently, you can, be, uh, you can write generic code in Rust, but cannot be generic over a constant. And in multimedia, you have many situations in which you have some small details that are just constants. And embedded this information in types is cumbersome and ugly. Uh, inline assembly. Some people like it, some people doesn't. Uh, is coming soon. Is sort of interesting since uh, we had it from start, but it's not really stable. And since the language wants to be as stable as possible, you cannot leverage the LLVM syntax that is completely in flux. And you cannot even leverage the syntax that is currently shared between GCC and CLang, because, again, 
you don't have any kind of warranties besides the fact that if the CLang slash GCC changed the syntax, you will have lots of angry users that have perfectly working code that stopped working. But it's not exactly a great warranty. So what is going on is that we have a new RFC, a new syntax being discussed, and possibly we will that get that within this year. And this is the good part. The bad part is that for multimedia, you would like to have uh, lookup tables. You want to generate a lot of them, and Rust doesn't really work uh, for this kind of purpose. Arrays in Rust are OK, but are, they are not good as vector. They are sort of second class citizen. So you cannot collect to a slice. You cannot uh, do a number of idiomatic, uh, use a number of idiomatic uh, uh, feature on arrays. It's going to change mainly because of the cons uh, generics. But Nobody is really working on that part, and uh, this is uh, pretty much the remaining bit that we would need for having a perfect language for multimedia. That said, we have five minutes left, and if you have question, please. Well, no, you can talk for five more minutes. Oh, uh, ah. <coughs> I thought. <coughs> oh, I thought that the question were part of the five minutes. No. Okay. It is open source. Yeah, we have a GitHub organization. Uh, everybody is welcome to contribute code. Uh, I already have somebody that kindly offered uh, a Vorbis decoder. So now, uh, beside what we have, we also have a Vorbis decoder. That was sort of a surprise. and was quite neat. So uh, I got a, a validation from a different person that the API works for the purpose. Let's uh, say, uh, Usual rules, you can fork the, what you like to contribute and uh, issue a pull request. And uh, I will be quite delighted for, um, to have more contribution. One of the problems with uh, the various uh, C uh, systems is that uh, CMD programming requires to rewrite everything for every architecture. Every time. Power PC, ARM, Intel, whatever, you, you need to rewrite everything. Does CMD in Rust uh, offer something that is a bit more generic? OK, the question is, uh, when you write CMD, you write CMD usually for a specific architecture, and uh, you repeat the exercise for every architecture. What Rust provide that uh, help us in this regard? Uh, say, uh, currently there is a crate that is called Faster that is leveraging the fact that uh, the Rust compiler itself can be made aware of CMD types, and you can write idiomatic code. So you can write iterators instead of doing loops. And automatically, up to a point, and the faster crate tries to abstract more, uh, let you do some CMD that is generic enough so it's going to work on x86, doesn't matter which is your specific target, and ARM. Possibly soon PowerPC, but not yet. Where is the portability? Uh, Rust is as portable as uh, LLVM provides. That means that you can write uh, Rust code and it's going to work pretty much on ARM, MIPS, x86, PowerPC, uh, uh, RISC-V, and uh, some other platform that are a little stranger. Yes? Yeah, but sorry. But, um, the problem is that usually I release for a player the output, which is quite different from platform to platform. Uh, the output is not a concern. Oh, uh, your question is, uh, what about the output? Uh, well, the output is not exactly a concern for the toolkit. Usually what you have as output nowadays is some kind of OpenGL, Vulkan OpenCV surface that you feel somehow. But uh, usually that part is a different problem. It is more related to uh, the GPU and uh, graphics programming than multimedia. Once you got your buffer, 
you want to convert it to something that you can put on the screen. And usually that means that you just move to a different field, OpenCL, OpenGL, Vulkan, and then that's another issue. For the audio, it's the same. You have min many different APIs to just directly output. Yeah, I was more kind of leveraging the, the hardware support, so kind of taking a file and putting the stream right into the, into the card. It's kind of usually more one of those. Yes, usually uh, what you do right now is trying to, uh, if possible, have the hardware do most of the work. That means that your multimedia framework is supposed to be good with the formats. Then once you get the data, usually you end up formatting it so it can be fit to the hardware pipeline. You know, probably NVIDIA, AMD, Intel, they all provide a open source friendly SDK to leverage that. So that part is part of the roadmap, 0.3. Uh, it's going to get there, uh, but first I wanted to uh, prove that you can use Rust to write uh, software decoders. The hardware acceleration is part of the equation and uh, will be implemented. And obviously Rust is going to help you because then you don't have many problems in uh, dealing with the hardware buffers. Since that's so usually an issue since the hardware buffer has to be properly reference counted and sometimes your API and the SDK API and reality could not perfectly match. Other question? If I wanted to get started to contribute, do you have a place where you have a list of like easy wins for me to start getting involved? Uh, I have a, okay. Uh, your question is, uh, if you want to contribute, do you have an easy task to get your, uh, well, fit wet? Yes, we have few. Uh, right now, uh, the code base is uh, quite lean, so we don't have many real issues or many tasks. But we have a couple. Uh, some are sort of easy if you have experience in uh, writing bindings, since uh, that's one of the easiest part. You write a binding to a C library that uh, is a reference implementation and you prepare the wrapper so uh, you can expose it from uh, Rust AV. That is the kind of easy task that currently we have. Can we have time for maybe one more question? Okay. I just wondered um, how much of this is possible with Safe Rust and how much how often do you have to drop down to on Safe Rust? Uh, currently, we don't have any fi uh, Your question is, uh, how much of it is on safe Rust and how much of it is safe Rust? Currently, is almost everything safe Rust beside when you try to read uh, bits? Because then uh, you have some data type and uh, you want to convert it so, to another data type and that operation is inherently unsafe. Uh, okay. Thank you very much. You're welcome.